Well, I'm going to call the meeting to order at uh, five for the public safety meeting for the city of Hudson, January 7th. Roll call, please. Alder person Alms is absent. Alder person Hall? Here. Alder person Marset. Here. Thank you, Melanie. Minutes of the regular meeting from November 12th, 2020. Move to approve. I will second. Seeing no corrections, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thanks, Joyce. Number three, discussion possible action to conduct the Hudson Hot Air Fair February 5th through 7th, 2021. And both Evie Newborn and Ruth Peterson are on from the Hot Air Fair. I don't know, Chief, if you want to start it or Ruth? Everybody got the um, attachment that I sent, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, um, questions on those where we can My answer? only question was the traffic flow and control over on O'Neill and all the Hanleys and then around EP Rock. What, what are we doing there? Is this a concern that was addressed by the neighbors last time? Flowing this is this is out at the industrial park. Okay. On Enlow and um, O'Neill. Yep. And we're not going to do anything around the, the school at all. Okay. And so that, I have talked to the chief about some of this stuff, and um, I guess I want to touch base with him more on it, on some of the possible signage that we need once we get it confirmed out there with some of the more of the business people. We're still working on that. But this is one that's our tentative plan is taking it out there. So tell me why you're doing that. I mean, I guess I know you, are you having all the activities centered around this? No, it's just going to be a drive through moon glow field of fire. Okay. Just on a couple, space out there. Right. Just a drive through. Okay. And right now we have Cardinal Health property that we can use in Valley Cartage. Okay. That we can use. And we're gonna be talking to um, as many as the business people that we can out there. So we don't have people parking their drive, you know, we don't, we don't want anybody to, to park anyway. Okay. You know, because it is a drive-through and, and um, and that's our plan is coming in off O'Neill by the, the sign and Hanley and going all the way down to Enlow across and back up and come out on Hanley again. That's our plan. Jeff, any concern? No, um, not for that one. Nope. Okay. All right. Let's, we have, let's, we, oh, I'm sorry, Randy. No, go ahead. We have, we, internally with the hot air fair, we, we've discussed some of the, the traffic on the Hanley area going both east and west. Mm -hmm. But if we have an officer on both corners there on Hanley and Enloe and Han Hanley and O'Neill and Hanley and... <coughs> And I don't rock. Know, rock. Okay, thank you. Um, will that be with the you know with the signage that I'd like to talk to the chief about and what kind of signage you'd like us to have and where to put it and everything, and we can touch base on that at another date. Yeah, if you work it out with Jeff, and we'll go off of his recommendation. He doesn't see foresee a problem, but I'm assuming you want pedestrian crossing temporary signs. Um, no, we just want to have car traffic come in and then go around and go back out again. Okay. Yeah. Are you planning to have signs that say "Stay, in, please stay in your car," things like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I've I've come up one with some signs that says uh, "Please stay in your vehicle, drive slowly and safely, um, no stopping." Um, so you don't get rear-ended. We don't want to put that on there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, 
a, a signage that says turn left when you get down to mm -hmm. the, um, the one street where you just turn left and go back out toward Hanley on Rock. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm not hearing you know, a lot of resistance from Jeff, so I'm assuming you're you're going to function it pretty well. Yeah, we can. Right. That's pretty easy to do. Okay. And we are going to be talking to um, the businesses that are in the park right now that are um, that do have possible truck traffic on weekends. And it'd be only Saturday for a few hours. So, you know, we'll talk to them and see what we can work out. We know there will be truck, truck, possible truck traffic because there is at least one company we know of that has a vehicle, you know, trucks. But some of the, the Cardinal doesn't have any and Valley doesn't have any. And the U-Line, I think, is pretty quiet on weekends, too. Okay. okay. What are the time frames for this, Ruth? Um. We we're going to start the glow at 5.30 until 6.30, quarter to 7. So we're looking at possibly a 5 to 8 for traffic control. How are you going to manage? Are you going to have people entering or turning on to O'Neill from Hanley from both lanes or are you going to try to keep people in the um, eastbound lane on Hanley so that they're only making a right turn into the business park? I don't know how that would work. Um, Jeff, what, what, what's your suggestion on that with having two officers on that that corner of Rock and Hanley and one on O'Neill and Hanley and having them turn both ways. Uh, well, on O'Neill, well, yeah, I guess theoretically they could be, <clears throat> well, they could want to turn both ways on both streets where that we're going to have to really um, uh, control that with the signage so that you can have people because you don't want people going both ways. No, no, I think when, when they're exiting, they're, they're going to need to exit to the right because yep. if they try to exit to the left, then they're going to end up in the, if we have people entering from both lanes, then they're going to end up in the line to get back in there. Yeah, so, but the traffic out that way on a Saturday night isn't, it's not like Carmichael Road, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it's plenty doable with... Um, with one officer there, but if you guys want two, I mean, we could certainly do that. Well, you guys work the details out, and I'm, yeah. I would, I would uh, support the trust that you guys are going to make the right calls up there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So now, Ruth, let's talk about this bike thing down in Lakefront. That uh, the bike that uh, what D Lander Dog is putting together. I think Evie has more information on that. Okay. Yarn Sealander and his dad, Doug, coordinated a fat tire event down in Lakefront Park last year. And they want to do it again this year. They're a subset event of Hot Air Affair, but they coordinated it by themselves last year with our oversight um, in conjunction with the fire department and any revenue they generated from the event was donated to the fire department last year and that's their intention again this year. And I believe Bjorn sent a proposed yes. um, map which he indicated was a bit different from last year. I think they it looked to me, and I I didn't dig out last year's map, it looked to me like they were keeping it on the east side of the main bandshell area of the park where I thought they ran around the back last year, but they may have made changes just to stay out of the area that's decorated. 
It looks like it's going behind it again. Is I don't it? have it up in front of me because it's on an email. Yeah, that was what I I had too, but because um, they, they're trying to avoid the Christmas lights that are up. Right, right. But I think it's pretty much the same as last year. He indicated that they were they were using the same kinds of protocols that other bike events have been doing this past year, the same way we're doing with the virtual race for for uh, 5k um there's been a there have been a lot of events that have been held very safely and i think it's based upon staggered start times for all of the racers um the start is virtual uh there's no gathering of people anywhere in conjunction with the with the race so um as far as we can see, is it, it's comparable to last year with just COVID protocols put in place. Okay. Are they covered under your insurance policy then? Um, we have coverage and they have coverage. So they do have that separate coverage? That was the question last year when they did it for the first time, and it's through some. I don't. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's through some racing association. Well, we'll need to get that clarified when it goes to council. I want to make sure that's covered. And are you putting it under the umbrella of the hot air fail permit? Hot air fail permit. Well, that's my question. After we get done talking about this, I don't know what we need for permits because it's different this year. And with Michelle taking leadership as the new chairperson of Hot Air Affair, we're, we're not totally clear as to what you want and what we need to do, because it's not the same as previous years. Well, I think just to cover the base and, and covers it all, just fill the, the, the regular special event permit thing form out and we'll call it good. There is there are fees attached to that, and we do not fall under the large gathering permit anymore because we don't have a large gathering. We can't waive the fees. Mm -hmm. We've never we never paid fees until <laughs> that that was put into place. As the I got the file right here, I think it was about two thousand eight. It was put into place as a large gathering ordinance, and the, the trigger for that ordinance was gathering of a thousand people or more. And when the newspaper put it in the paper that a thousand people came to the parade, then we had to start filling out the form yeah. and, and pay the fees. But we never paid fees prior to that. All we did was work through the safety committee and go to the city council with the application to be declared a community event, which then was the trigger for the vendors being- Why you, Did you fill that paperwork out this time? We haven't been told to fill out anything. I would fill that out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not gonna- Well, I, I, there, was never I'm not there was never a form to fill out. I just sent um, an email to Nancy Corson and said, we would like to be declared a public, a community event, and she would put it on the agenda, and that was that. Jeff, you familiar with any of that? No. Joyce, I don't think it's a big deal if they, we do the same thing, and if I'm assuming you're okay with waiving fees. Yeah. I'd love to see a 1,000 people if it was done safely and <laughs> That mm -hmm. protocol and all that stuff, but that, that that's not possible. Is why we walked away from from doing the the, the event. We we're not doing any events that will bring crowds together. Yeah, everything is right. drive through or or from a distance or virtual. Well, so I guess what we'll do is we'll make a motion, Joyce, of some sort, saying that. We're designating this a community event. Okay, I'll, I'll second that. Okay, and then that should cover it. Let us clarify it for sure with 
city administrator, and then we'll move it forward to council so we're not slowing you guys mm -hmm. up. Well, and, yeah. and that was that was what we had assumed that whatever needed to be done had to be done at this ne next council meeting on the 19th. Yeah. And with everything so different this year, we're not going to be having any kind of vendors on public property. The only vendors we're going to have will be two trucks for popcorn and pretzels up in the old Family Fresh parking lot in conjunction with what they hope is a major food drive. So it's a mm -hmm. um, community food collection. And oh, by the way, buy yourself some popcorn on the way through. Okay. Yeah, well, Aaron and Becky can take care, can't help you handle the paperwork, whatever is necessary. They, they, that would be up to them. And to, there might not even you. be any. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we really we appreciate it because Aaron's new and Michelle's new on our end. And so between <laughs> them, um, because this is such a goofy year, this is my file of paper for the last 20 years. So, <laughs> um, I think we started with the large gathering ordinance back in you know, about 2012. And prior to that, we were just asking for community designation. And then Ruth was working with Marty, with safety committee, and there are sheets in there describing what we were requesting in terms of support from law enforcement, police department, EMS, um, public works for for um, barricades and signage and all those kinds of things. Okay. Are there any uh, input from the other chiefs? Scott, Bridget, any concerns? No, I'm fine. We'll just, I'll get together with them to figure out what hours and that they want us up there, but I don't, I don't see anything. And as long as we have someone kind of directing traffic in case we get, need to get in and out, but I don't see anything big. And okay. Bridget, I apologize. I have haven't gotten in touch with you because we were kind of waiting on this, but I was assuming that you would be on board too. No problem. We are on board. Uh, same as Scott. Just when we know the details, we'll make sure we have whatever you guys need. Okay, great. Appreciate it. All right. So the motion is that we will designate this a city uh, community event and uh, we'll contact Aaron or Becky with the... Um, uh, proper details of how that goes forward for our next council meeting and that the insurance is uh, settled as well. Well, I won't put that in the motion, but I just want to make sure insurance is uh, on the bike thing. Yes, I mean, and I'll send a note to Bjorn. Had Air Affairs insurance renews on January 15th, so okay. we will have our new policy uh, that will deliver to City Hall prior to the meeting on the 19th. Very good. Any further discussion, Joyce? <laughs> Seeing none, um, all in favor? Oh. Aye. Aye. Okay, did we'll you see get, you on the 19th. Did you get the information on the golf carts? Oh, yeah. That one thing about the golf carts is we made a, we had set an ordinance way back that allows that. I don't think you need a special permit. See, I didn't know that. So, you know, just to be on the safe side, I wanted to bring it up and see if it's okay that we can do that. They will have headlights. Yeah. And okay. not little blinky bicycle lights. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, you guys. Thanks I had for a all plan. Hard work. <laughs> so the golf carts are okay in those hours? Jeff? I'm not familiar with the ordinance you're talking about, Randy, so I'll have to do some research. Okay. I don't have an issue with it. It's not like you guys are going out joyriding, right? <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> don't oh, I don't know. Those two. <laughs> I don't know. Me, me, me and my boys, we might get a little crazy on those. <laughs> <laughs> Just coordinate, touch base with Jeff, and then we'll move forward from there. If there's something extraordinary out of it or if i'm incorrect then we'll talk about it on the council meeting okay Super. thank and you did you guys talk about the rivercrest section at all 
Were there any no. issues with that other than the jurisdictional issue at um, County Road F and Cooley Trail? It worked we pretty Every go ahead with that with the Rivercrest one. That's kind of the secondary hope. I I firmly believe that we need to be in the industrial park just mm -hmm. because it has more physical space to absorb cars and get them off the highways. Um, the consumer has been taught how to do these drive-in events, such as what's going on with Winter Carnival and Bentleyville and all of the summer events. And the, the amount of physical space in the industrial park is such that people can be in there and and if it's a slow moving parking lot, which it probably will be, it won't be out on the major highways. Our concern is making sure that we can get the people into the park, take them around the route and get them back out again without them backing up too badly from any direction. And Ruth is talking with some, some folks who have drones, so we're looking at trying to have good communication to the public, but also have access to aerial observation of what's going on out there so that we can deal with, with that. I'm anticipating a lot of cars showing up. So we're working really hard to try to make sure that, that we can accommodate them. And I think the industrial park can absorb a whole lot more vehicles that are moving at three miles an hour than we could ever get through the school property. So with cooperation with the city and private property owners within the industrial park, that's by far our first choice. Have those yeah, issues nailed down. Or not. Have those issues nailed down for council. Mm -hmm. okay. Did we vote actually? On? One of our big questions is who owns a lot out there that we want to use, and we don't seem to be getting a clear answer as to whether the city owns it or some individual owns it. In the industrial park, you should be able to get that answer through the mayor's office. He's. What did you think? He, did, he hasn't gotten back to you on that? <laughs> or if you got a contact number for Al Burchill? Well, well no, that's the, that's the industrial park. They call it business park people. Who is a different group than the, than the city. And the lot in question supposedly is owned by the city, but might be in the process of being sold. Oh. So, so Mike that's Johnson. what Mike yeah. Johnson, yeah. Yeah, it's that lot between Cardinal Health and um Valley on and low. Yeah, reach out to Mike Johnson. So I had heard some scuttlebutt about it being possibly sold, which would be good because it could be somebody that we can deal with. So um okay. because I did talk him about two weeks ago but it was before the holidays so and i haven't heard talked to him since so um nail, but, nail it down for the next meeting okay mm -hmm. for final thank you thank you thanks guys mm -hmm. have a good one oh um, i had a question also um somebody had brought up about putting you know i know that we have to put give you a list of the signs that we're going to put where when and how many kind of sort of you know through mike johnson and, I've heard nothing about that. I don't know about that. Okay, for years and years and years, we've we've always had to when we put up the directional signs on Seventeenth and Cooley and everything. I had to give a list to um, Denny, and then and then Mike, and so they at least know so because he had that sign ordinance that they can only be up for so long or whatever. Right. So. We had a question last night at the meeting that they want to put up uh, for the food trucks like a week ahead of time on Cooley Road, saying, you know, there'll be food trucks uh, here, stop in on Saturday, February, whatever, for don't, you know, give donations to whatever. And, and 
So do I have, should I just go through Mike on this too and about those signs? Yeah, that's where you get the permit from. Okay. It's not a permit. It's just like a, a email saying this is where we're putting up. Well, so. yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. But okay. anything else? No, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce, did we vote on that? Yes. Okay. I think we did. Right. I'll vote again. No. <laughs> well, thank you guys. We're going to move on to our next agenda item. Yes, Feel thank you very much. And Chief will stay in touch, and Bridget and, and Scott will all stay in touch. Appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Thank hey, you. Mike. Good. Number four, discussion of possible action on lighting and crosswalk safety on Vine Street at Diamond Drive. You all should have got the narrative on the issue sheet in regards to Joyce and her husband's issue up there comes to a safety issue, I, I'm thinking maybe this also should go to Public Works after we talk yes. about it a little bit. So Joyce, I guess if you want to talk about it, and Dean, jump in on your executive summary, please. Well, as it says on the issue sheet, uh, my husband was driving and I was a passenger. We got to that intersection. There was a woman and her dog crossing and they did not use the flashing lights. So it was hard to see them until we were right up there. And so how do we, how do we better light that intersection so that if people aren't using those lights that we spent all that money installing, uh, that we can, people can be seen better. And how do we encourage people to use those lights? My husband said, uh, we, we need to put in an M&M &M dispenser so that when they press the button, they'll get M&Ms. <laughs> That's probably not a bad idea, but I don't think it's been done. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. First time for everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are your recommendations, Dean? <laughs> well, uh, so after um, uh, Joyce contacted us about it, um, I stopped out there just to see what was going on. Um, uh, so... There is a light at the intersection, however, it's in the southwest corner and the, the lighted crossing or the flashing crossing is on the northeast to southeast uh, corners. Uh, so the light is not really directed onto the crosswalk at the intersection, which is not the ideal place for it to be. Um, so I, I, you know, t I would definitely be in favor of lighting that crosswalk a lot better uh, in, in moving the light over to a, a, one of the other corners where the where the um, crosswalk actually is. It's just a matter of, uh, as everything comes down to uh, finding money to do it, uh, it's probably about ten to $15,000 just spitballing a number at it. Um, and then the other thing, uh, talking about how to make people use the, the, the flashing lights, um, uh, you know, in my experience with these uh, systems, uh, the most most of the time when people don't use them, it's because the push buttons are in a bad spot uh, to, to to be used effectively. So I made sure to take a look at that. Um, the The button on the southeast corner uh, is and as and, and this. I don't know if I could find a better spot for the button. It's right by the ramp uh, as you're crossing the crosswalk. Uh, yeah, that one is in a good place. The the one on the northeast corner, um, it's on the on the pole with the flashing light, um, a little bit further away from the, the actual crosswalk. But because of all the trail is uh, built there, it's right up next to the curb, so it really isn't. Uh, a place that you could put that button without blocking the trail by doing that. Uh, it's not uh, way out of the way by any means. I don't know which corner this person that Joyce ran it or shouldn't say ran into, but <laughs> no, <we didn't. laughs> there was no uh, contact. Encountered. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, she was so, starting from the south side and okay, moving north. Um. You know, so I could I could understand a little bit more if somebody's coming off the trail on Vine Street to cross mm -hmm. Vine 
uh, towards the south uh, there if they didn't want to go all the way to push the button. But um, it's it's also not like super far out of the way either. So um, if you wanted to create enough space to put a button closer to the crosswalk, you have to reconstruct the pedestrian ramp, which uh, outside of an adjacent project costs a fair amount of money. Mm -hmm. And we're talking, you know, $20,000 or something like that. <laughs> Again, just spitballing numbers at it. But, um, uh, you know, the, the, the ramps there are not ADA compliant. So at some point in time, we're going to have to replace them anyway. Um, okay. Uh, so that would it, be a good time to do some. That would be a good time to do something. Uh, the they get the it's called economy of scale. So you know if you have another thing going on there, the 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 price is this comes down to the more the, the bigger you make the project, essentially the lower the the price reached individual thing ends up being. So that would be the most effective cost effective time to do it. Um, we. Uh, don't have a project in the CIP for that uh, area. We were hoping that um, that that intersection upgrading the crosswalks there was part of our grant application for the Safe Routes to School uh, grant funding that we unfortunately didn't get this time around. Um, it would have been great to get, and that's that would have probably helped the situation if we did get that, but we didn't. Um, obviously, we'll try again for the next time uh, there is a okay. grant. Uh, well, let's or, focus or, on the light then, uh, on the yeah. issue on the sheet. Is that, uh, is it cheaper to put another light up there or to move this one? Well, the one that's out there right now, I believe is an Excel Energy own light. Um, so, and, and it's on one of their poles already. So in order mm -hmm. to get another light out there, whether you move that one or just add another one, it's going to be on us to, to pay for that. Have you reached out to Excel and asked for a partnership? They've been pretty good about helping us out. Uh, I've not reached out, but if you guys, you know, want me to do so, I certainly can. Mm -hmm. um, since uh, we hadn't talked about this. It, it would help. Right, so, and then yeah. it, as this goes to public works and then finance, we can find how to, to pay for it. Mm -hmm. I think okay. it's warranted, not just because of Joyce's issues, it's just, Joyce actually brought it to the table and there's probably been a lot of that up there. Mm -hmm. sure. don't know. Mm -hmm. So I think it certainly warrants some uh, uh, attention. It's a busy intersection too with the Y traffic mm -hmm. and everything there too. So, And I, you know, like I think Joyce and I both made the commitment that whenever we're doing something up in that area, we're going to do it because safety's premier up there right now with all that's going on up there. Yep. So what's your pleasure, Joyce? Where do you want to see this go? Public so safety? Or yeah, I think it should go to public works. So I'll make the motion. Second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I'm sure Jim will love that because he doesn't <laughs> like taking our stuff. <laughs> which I think is ridiculous, but that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> so next item on informational items. What do you want to start with? Scott St. Martin. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Bridget, you're yep. first. Yeah. Um, well, I don't have too much for you guys. I guess just kind of recap some of our 2020 numbers. Uh, 694 calls in the Hudson service area. In our whole service, we did 10,393 calls, so obviously our busiest year on the books as we expected, but even be, uh, busier than we projected. Um, as of last week, all of our staff have had the opportunity to get vaccinated uh, with the COVID-19 vaccine. One did, except for just a few who opted to decline uh, at this time, and our second doses start um, next week. Otherwise, everyone is healthy. We're, we're still well staffed at this point. We do have one brand new medic uh, scheduled to start at the end of this month. Um, other than that, things are just in general going well. Excellent. I had a meeting today, and I can tell you that the Hudson Hospital staff will be all vaccinated and his physician partners up there 
as of next week, they'll all be vaccinated. So it is moving fast. So well, that's a for, good for our system. I'm excited about kind of turning this corner. Um, we are um, seeing a decline in COVID cases in the hospital and in EMS, which is good. We've been seeing a pretty stark decline over the last few weeks. Uh, we've seen that we saw a little blip in the last few days we think might be just residual from like Christmas get togethers and stuff like that, but nothing like where we were a few weeks ago. And so provided that we so trend this way in the coming weeks, uh, we feel pretty good about where we're at. So excellent. Good news. Um, fire department. Thank you, Bridget. Scott. Yeah, Randy, uh, I guess in a COVID we've been, Pretty lucky here. I haven't been hit too hard. I think uh, here and there we've had people out, but recently it's been much better. Um, vaccinations through the county, they're, I think, about a week or so away possibly or starting to what I've heard from the county. So we'll just kind of wait to hear from them. Um, we had two sprinkler saves in the last month in commercial buildings uh, where the calls have come in with sprinkler heads going off and there were, were fires that uh, the sprinklers work, which is – is great. I mean, that, that's what they're there for. Um, and it was, it was nice to see them work. And uh, so, especially one of them was downtown. Obviously, we, we never want to see anything get out of control downtown with because a lot of the buildings are protected. So um, it was nice, nice to have those. And then we're also looking at uh, possibly putting on four to five people over the next couple of months. It's obviously a little more difficult, especially for us on a part-time basis to onboard people. But um, we're hopefully going to be doing that over the next month or two. Um, fairly busy, I believe, is about one of our busiest years again last year. So um, hopefully try to get back to somewhat normal with training and that over the next several months. But we're just kind of on hold right now and doing some online stuff. So that's about it. Any questions at all, Randy? No, I'm glad to hear you're sounding better. Yeah, I noticed that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people are, some aren't. So. <laughs> all right, thank, thank you, Scott. Jeff. Um, yeah, so I guess our last meeting was probably in November, right? So uh, a lot of the stuff with the emergency emergency public safety order and stuff like that was was kind of missed because um, we didn't have a December meeting. But I'm sure everybody's aware of the ordinance that was passed by council to have the have the bars and restaurants in the downtown area, well, all, all over the city, I guess. Um, be closed early on uh, what started out as Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and now has alleviated uh, Fridays and Saturdays. I anticipate that continuing <clears throat> until Minnesota opens up. Um, they are opening up, but they're also closing at 10 o'clock, so that's not really going to alleviate any of our issues if we were to open back up. So I'm hopeful that we can continue uh, continue doing what we're doing until – until Minnesota has a full reopen. And, you know, if they don't, you know, then we'll just, we'll go back to what we were doing the first couple of weeks of December um, with the massive, massive presence and um, lean on our uh, law enforcement partners a little bit to, to have some extra staff available, um, especially in the downtown sector of the city. So um, we may have to do that, Jeff. What's that? We may have to do that. We can't yep, just yeah. We're we're prepared, and our our uh, our law enforcement partners are prepared for that. Is a very real possibility, and they're willing to help. So, <clears throat> um, how are your vaccinations? I'm sorry, I covered you. How are you getting your vaccinations? Are you guys getting them? No, we uh, won't get them until Group One A is complete. Um, so uh, we're anticipating you late winter, early spring that we'll be up. Uh, really? Yeah. Get some. Well, yeah. It all depends on how fast they get through Group One A. So, um, we've been identified as a group in One B, and uh, we're just we're working through it. And you know, we were pretty lucky. We'd have one out with COVID, and then you know, four weeks later, we'd have another one out with COVID. Uh, last uh, over the holidays here, we had five people out at the same time, which was kind of strenuous, but um, hopefully, you know, hopefully we won't run into those issues anymore. Hopefully the vaccinations come through um, and then 
you know, hopefully that alleviates some of this issue. What's your strength of force? Right now we're at 28 sworn. Okay. Um, which is what the authorized, uh, authorized strength of force is. So uh, we're right where the authorization numbers are, are at and uh, we're working, uh, working, working along with what we've got. Is everybody healthy and on uh, working that, or we have we have one that that's got a work injury that's out right now on light duty, but other than that, uh, everybody is everybody is back to work. That sounds good. Okay, yeah. so it's it's been it's been wonderful, <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm hopeful for for a better 2021 where we can actually um, start to see the impact of of being full staff. Realistically, Jeff, if we were to you need new more officers. Did you say two, maybe? Uh, to, to handle the the volumes that we've been yeah. that we've been having to handle. I've heard a lot of numbers kicked around, and I want to be realistic and optimistic about what we could do. Uh, realistic, we probably have to add three or four to be able to handle the situation, you know, by ourselves. But that's, that's a situation, but we hire four new officers. I don't want to tell them their job is done once everything gets back to whatever normal. Well, and, and the reality is, is that, you know, Hudson is growing, right? So last year, our average serviceability was 75 to 80,000 people a day. And that number is going to continue to increase, right? So, um, yes, yeah, some of what we've seen here has been a bit of an anomaly, um, but I think it's also kind of a trend that, you know, a lot of people are coming to Hudson from outside of Hudson to enjoy what Hudson has to offer. And, and that's, you know, I don't think that's going to go away. I think it's going to continue to increase. Well, I think it's time to take a hard look at uh, increasing the number and coming up with a plan to present to the public safety committee. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm not promising anything, but I think it's a good time to take a look. The census has been delayed, so we don't know the numbers to justify any of that. So let us be proactive and try to find a happy medium of maybe more officers. And now that your labor pool is a little higher, you get your list is a little longer, right? Right. Yep maybe we'd have a little more luck in, in, in hiring a few more officers. Yeah, we can put that together. That's pretty easy to do. I think it's something we need to take a look at. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but. Oh, I know. I know. I just, you know, it's, we're seven days into a brand new budget that doesn't have that. So. Um, right. You know, my only hesitation, right? I mean, I would have asked for it last year, but. You well. Know. You can always ask for stuff. It's just how how it falls. Well, you know it is, and then there was a lot of things that um, that came to light here over the last, you know, nine nine to twelve months that you know we weren't really anticipating either. So correct. Okay. Anything else? I kind of uh, cut me off there. No, that was that was about it. Just uh, just wanted to give those two updates. Um, okay. Guys, everything is everything is going okay. Excellent. You guys are doing a great job. Hang in there mm -hmm. as we move forward. Well, thank you. We're all trying to do our best. It's all we can do, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I skipped informational items. Anybody have any? Anything for our next agenda item? Just the one item that was in the... For Bill? Um, that we need Bill, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep that on mind. Okay, good. So is that it? That's it. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.